Run it, run! Item number one, prayer, Councilor Bosco. Everyone please rise. Dear Lord, as we prepare this week for Thanksgiving holiday, may we take a moment to listen or list the things we are thankful for. We are thankful for family who loves us unconditionally. We are thankful for friends who support us in good times and in bad times. We are thankful for the food we eat as well as the ability to give those in need. We are thankful for our community and all who makes and feel their home. So may you continue to bless us and use us to be a blessing to others. In the Lord's name, amen. amen. All right. To the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Councilor Bosco. Here. Councilor Sakala. Here. Councilor Casati. Here. Councilor Davis. Here. Councilor Denny. Here. Councilor Falk. Here. Mayor Ludwig. Here. Councilor Muller. Here. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Here. Councilor Ungeyer. Here. Councilor Arnoni. There are 10 members present. One is absent. Uh, uh, I'm the for fire evacuation and in case of emergency we have the doors at the back we ask folks to please orderly go out through the back or doors to the left where you'd go out to the left take your first left go down the stairs hook around the, the corner and go out the sliding glass doors uh, item number five minutes of preceding many meetings uh, do we have a, a mo oh I'm sorry uh, special uh, a special meeting October 16, 2017. We have a motion to approve. So, so motion. Second. Moved by uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Suzak, seconded by Councillor Falk. All those in favor? All those opposed? No discussion. No discussion. Uh, regular meeting October 16th. So moved. So moved by Councillor Denny, seconded by Councillor Crisati. All those in favor? Show of hands. No discussion. No discussion? <laughs> You usually, abstain? usually you ask. All right, sorry. Previous one too. I'll get, I'll get the protocol. Sorry. Two, abstain. two abstentions. We have, we have eight in favor. Two abstentions. Special meeting October 30, 2017. Do you have a motion to approve? So moved. So moved by Councilor Falk. Second by Councilor Casati. Any discussion? There you go. There we go. Any discussion <laughs> on the meeting? Hearing none. All those in favor? Raise your hand. All those opposed? Abstentions. Eight in favor. Two abstentions. I have number six special guests. Do we have any special guests? No special guests. No special guests. No. Item seven, public communications and petitions. We welcome everyone to the November 20th, 2017 council meeting. Well, by the way, the, the date on the TV is wrong, by the way, just so folks know. It shows November 13th. Um, uh, we, <laughs> sorry, I've noticed that correctly. We, uh, we ask folks to, again, uh, we have five minutes to, to speak. Please refrain from any personalities. But again, we welcome everyone to the November 20th meeting. Do we have anyone who would like to speak? Mr. Uh, Mr. Cogdella. I will time you, and I'll give you the 35 minutes, give you the 30-second warning. Okay. I certainly don't want to, you know, yank it. Uh, well, welcome, uh, new council members, those returning, uh, mayor and deputy mayor. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, I would like to reference the October 30th special meeting S of town Steve, council. Sorry, uh, name and address for the record. Oh, sorry. Steve Cogtella, 2 South River. Uh, again, I'd like to uh, reference the October 30th special meeting of town council, specifically involving the town acquisition of 33 North River Street from the Anfield Community Development Corporation. The acquisition price stated and emphasized at that meeting was $146,760 the town assessor's appraised value for the property. However, the acquisition price was substantially higher because it was $146,760 plus waiving Enfield Community Development Corporation back taxes to the town of Enfield. A part of this purchase agreement that was never disclosed publicly at the meeting, therefore no record in meeting minutes exist. I believe failing to inform the public of this is deceptive. I'm unclear if the back taxes waived were exclusively for 33 North River Street 
or the entire amount of taxes owed by uh, owed to the town for all properties owned by the Enfield Community Development Corporation currently totaling twenty five thousand seven hundred dollars. The back taxes owed for 33 North River Street alone are $17,425. Either situation, the town paid substantially more than what was stated to the public regarding the acquisition of this property. If taxes were waived exclusively for 33 North River Street, that would still leave about $8,000 outstanding owed to the town by this corporation. The question is, why did the town recover these taxes during this property transaction? The town directly paid ECDC debt owed to the IRS in the amount of $113,126, Connecticut Department of Labor $22,732, Fallon Law Office $1,750, and the remaining money, $9,185 to the Enfield Community Development Corporation. I don't understand why the town didn't collect the remaining outstanding tax owed by ECDC, approximately $8,000 out of the 9185 remaining. Allowing that to slide doesn't appear to be in the best interest of the town, or in fact was it done intentionally to further benefit the ECDC by providing seed money. This again raises the question to the motive of public officials concurrently holding management positions with the town and private corporations, especially corporations that do business with the town. That brings me to my next question. The town manager was authorized by council to assume the executive director position of ECDC primarily to negotiate with the IRS. So if that has been accomplished, will council now require the town manager to resign as executive director from this corporation? I'm confident the development corporation has someone in mind at this time to secede him as executive director. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Anyone else wish to speak before the council tonight? Jack. Jack Sheridan, 7 Buchanan Road. I came first to congratulate all of you. Glad to see everybody made it and uh, newcomers that made it. Congratulations. Um, and I'm here also to remind you that the same people that elected you defeated the JFK referendum. So I'd like you to keep that in mind because the people just can't afford the kind of money that they were in intending to spend and especially when we know that it can be done for a lot less. When you see simple things like six million dollars for furniture, there's something wrong. You have to wonder, gee, how did it get defeated? So I'm just here to remind you, try to be a little bit of your conscience. Thank you very much. And again, congratulations. I know all of you guys, the time that you spend away from your families and your homes, I really appreciate. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jack. Would anyone else like to speak before the council? Bob. I just seeing if there's anybody behind me. Bob T. Katz, 601 Hazard Avenue, Enfield. I want to congratulate all of you, new faces, probably new ideas, and we'll probably get rid of all the excess inventory of buildings that we have, like Fermi High. Everybody feels that the fields are sacred, sacred grounds. You could buy fields right near Enfield High. Put that on the market for $5 million and get something in our tax rolls to to uh, make up the shortage that the state's not going to pay. Uh, but I want to congratulate. This is the 28th town council. And apparently, this town in, in those years since 1963 has had more town managers and interim managers than mayors. So it's a very interesting statistic. I got a copy of the JFK uh, demographic study. There's flaws in it. I've had an expert look at it. You're not going to have the enrollment that's projected by the architect. And I'm going to tell you how an architect does this. They hire their own demographer to blow up the enrollment. It's like uh, what the insurance companies do. When you file a lawsuit, and, and this happened to me, I had a 23% disability from the accident. And I filed a lawsuit. 
Next thing you know, my attorney calls me and he says, the insurance company wants you to see their doctor. I said, what would be the outcome? He says, you'll probably end up with a 5% disability and they're gonna reduce the payment. He says, what do you wanna do? I said, let's settle. So the same thing. And also they blow up the price. So the politicians can say we're under budget. We built it, we, we finished the project be on time, way before on time. It's like the Route 91 through Springfield, the two years ahead of schedule. That was the real schedule. Uh, but I want to congratulate all of you. I'm doing a count on the, the in fact, we've had a lot of interim managers um, over the years. That's really amazing. Thank you, and I know all of you do a great job. I know many of you, and you're very capable. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Would anyone else like to speak before the town council? Anyone else like to speak for the town council for a second time? For a third time? I will announce public communications are closed. Item 8, Councilor Communication Petitions. Oh. Item 8, Councilor Communication Petitions. Do I have anyone? Yeah. Councilor Falk. I attended the National League of Cities meeting last week and um, I came across uh, a, a booth there from the uh, uh, Washington, D.C., and it's, uh, they offer a program called uh, COPS. It's a grant program, and if you sign up to do this, you can hire a new police officer, uh, but you have to hire them for four years, and they will pay you uh, a total up to $125,000 to support that officer. Um, and I don't know what it costs for an officer here in town, but this would certainly be a good chunk of money towards an officer. And uh, I, I would like to have the, uh, the town manager look into this and see if it's appropriate for us, and if so, to come forward with some proposals for us. Thank you. Councilor Bosco. Yeah, through the uh, mayor to the town manager, uh, Post Office Road, um, right over there by our property, they had cut, Eversource had done a, a, a road cut there, and um, I don't know if they got half done with it or they didn't put the flowable fill into it like they're supposed to, but it's starting to sink, and I think we better get on that before the pavement plants close, and we can't do it. Thank you. Councilor Denny. Yeah, I noticed in your, uh, through the mayor and to the town manager, uh, I noticed in your uh, brief of, of public works that the uh, the pothole situation or the manhole situation was uh, all taken care of, but uh, <clears throat> I noticed uh, three or four uh, on Brainerd Road uh, automatically that are uh, still concave manholes there uh, prior to the last two or three before you get to uh, Route 5. And I was wondering if we're closed out, then we're never going to get those fixed. <laughs> Councilor Davis. Through the mayor to the town manager, a uh, follow-up on the email that I sent about the, at the senior center, the friends of the senior center envelopes being removed out of the senior center. Uh, where do we stand with that? And also the friends of the senior center has raised which they are a nonprofit, but a good $300,000 that went into our senior center for the tables, chairs, and everything else. So I'm wondering where does that stand since it's, it's a major part of our senior center to keep it going and keep it nationally recognized the way it is today. Anyone else? Uh, Deputy Mayor. Yep. <laughs> I got Sorry. a mic. There we go. Motion to suspend the rolls and to move items A1 through A5, B1 through B5, E, F, G, and H to miscellaneous and proceed to vote. Second. Motion by Deputy Mayor Suzak, second by Councilor Falk. Any discussion on the consent agenda? Hearing none, by show of hands, all those in favor? All those opposed? We have 10 in favor, zero opposed. 
Any other council communications? I just have two quick things. Just want to remind folks, uh, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, Enfield High, we finally return almost Turkey Day football to Enfield. <coughs> Enfield will be playing a school that we love to beat, South Windsor, 7 o'clock at the high school. I mean, if you haven't been to a, I mean, I know it's Thanksgiving Eve, but uh, I've had the pleasure when I was a kid playing football on Turkey Day, and it's great. So hopefully the whole town will be at the high school, 7 o'clock this Wednesday. Thanksgiving Eve football returns to Enfield, and the kids have done a really good job this year. Um, also, just want to congratulate all the fall athletes from both JFK and Enfield High. We had some very successful seasons. Unfortunately, we didn't win a state title in a couple of the teams that we could have, but they did a great job making it to the tournament. And as we move into the winter sports, you know, again, hopefully folks will show up and watch these kids who are playing multiple sports do a great job. And again, it's pretty exciting, especially, you know, to support the kids who are, are playing at our high schools and our middle school. And uh, that's all I have. And I'll, I'm sorry, one other thing. I got a note today. Um, just reminding folks, Torchlight Parade and Carol Sing, San Sunday, December 3rd, which will be before our next meeting, 6 o'clock, meets, starts at Enfield Street School, I believe, and then walks to the town green. So love to see everyone there. Thank you. Item 9, town manager report. Oh. To, uh, item 9, town manager report communications. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, included within your packet is the uh, project and activities report. I know it's been a while since you all have seen one of those. Um, so a lot of updates in there. More than happy to answer any questions or concerns that you might have. Um, Councilor Falk, regarding uh, the COPS grant, uh, we will look into that and uh, we'll get that handed out tomorrow at the staff meeting. As uh, Councilor Bosco, the uh, sinkhole there just east of 103, I believe, is the address. I saw that this morning. Um, Councilor Denny, I'm not familiar with those manholes, but I can uh, guarantee you that Mr. Bilmes is jotting notes and will have some answers for me tomorrow morning. <laughs> I, uh, I have to confess, the, uh, the original condition made me drive Brainerd like a slalom course, so I, uh, I tried to avoid those, so I'll make sure to hit those on the way home. And uh, Councilor Davis, I'm still waiting on final comments from uh, the town attorney's office before I forward you um, and the rest of council the response, um, as there were a few other council members that had asked um, about um, uh, the issues with the Friends of the Senior Center and, uh, and a few other items. So um, I'm still waiting on some information, and then I'll, I'll have a response to you. So um, that being said, I'm more than happy to answer any questions or concerns that uh, members of council might have regarding the uh, uh, PAR or any other uh, issues or concerns. Deputy Mayor Suzak. I have a question on the part. And I see that we're using, again, the building that was the workshop that's in behind the Hazardville Institute. Um, that has been referred over to the Senior Repair Assistance Program as a, a place for them to store their particular items um, so that they can have access to those as they're doing the, uh, the necessary senior repair so they can uh, right, but They're not operating out of there. They're just using it for storage. That is correct. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Sure. You know the questions for the town manager? Yeah, I do. Council Crisotti? Yeah. Um, could you give us a, more of an update on the traffic signal by the high school? Sure. Um, the, um, let's see, um, so a few months back now, um, there was a conversation between um, uh, the leadership over at uh, Condot and uh, former Councilor Hall, now Representative Hall, about having a traffic signal put in over at that location, Route 5 in the, uh, the Enfield High School Drive. Um, that matter was um, addressed um, by a tentative agreement from the, uh, uh, the Department of Transportation that if the town agreed to build the light to the standard of the Department of Transportation, the Department of Transportation would reimburse the town for the expenses incurred to, to build that, uh, that signal. Uh, we had communicated and then um, Condot also brought up the signal at Moody and Maple. Um, they had already scheduled some work to be done at that location as well, so they wanted to have some additional conversations. Uh, at that point in time, um, I was asked to take that issue before leadership, and I did at that time. Leadership provided me direction, uh, and I reached back out to Condot and did not hear a response until recently, uh, when again Representative Hall was able to reach out to leadership at Condot 
about that project. Uh, we were then given the contact information for uh, a senior transportation uh, planner at that, uh, at that time, uh, Mark something or other. Uh, he and I traded uh, phone calls for about a week, week and a half, and then that number that he had provided um, was disconnected. Uh, and I was finally able to get a new number and an email address. So I did reach out to him. I think it was Friday, but I have not heard back. So at this point in time, uh, the plan remains the same, but we just don't have anything in writing with respect to an agreement between the town and, and Condot. So everyone's on the same page with the general concept, but you know, what does Condot standards look like? What do Condot standards entail? Um, you know, how much is the minimum the Condot would do versus the additional work the town would do. That hasn't been clarified yet, and so we need to get some kind of an agreement between the town and Condot to be able to proceed. So um, I think it's just a matter of uh, the state being strapped for resources to be able to communicate with us, but uh, we are continuing to reach out to them to try and facilitate that discussion. Okay. Thank you. Sure. One more. One more. <clears throat> He, he mentioned Enfield High, and immediately thought of the, uh, the, the directional sign that we talked about down at Bridge Lane. I don't know if that ever happened or whether it's in the planning stages. Correct. No, we did not move forward with the directional signage. We were able to reach out to uh, the leadership at the school, and they contacted uh, Google and actually had the, G, uh, the GIS, the GPS pin relocated. Um, at that level as a means to try and accommodate the concern that you had originally right. expressed. Right. So at this point in time, we're not aware that we're having misdirected traffic. Mm -hmm. um, so we were not planning to add an additional sign unless it was necessary. Okay. So if there are additional uh, incidents where folks are going down, I believe it was Riverview was yep. the street, and having to turn around. So if there are additional incidents, we'll be more than happy to mm -hmm. respond with the sign. Okay, thank you. Sure. <clears throat> Anyone else? Brian, I just had two questions. You know, the program Peter mentioned, you actually can look at some recent history. We did that program back in the 90s, sure. and it actually was a very effective how we started community policing at that time. So it was a way of getting folk, you know, being able to get some extra police officers on the bikes, which obviously I understand we're in kind of a budget crunch, but again, a way of actually funding and getting more police, you know, again, bringing the community police back and making it full time. It's a very good program, and you have some recent history on it. You know, uh, uh, along that line, I know for late Friday afternoon, we got word that the governor is going to cut another $2.3 million out of our budget. Not going to put you on the spot, but uh, just curious on when you think we'll have, how is it going to be, you know, I know you mentioned we're not sure if we're actually going to be within this budget or maybe as we move, you know, next fiscal year. I, don't, I mean, I know you don't, may have an answer now, but if maybe by next meeting, just an update on how we think that's going to affect us. Sure. We will work to be able to present, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll work to be able to present a more comprehensive answer in the very near future. And, you know, along those lines, we mentioned at leadership, again, we you know, I certainly like to see a suggestion box for our employees as we move forward into January where we'll have some of those budget deliberations, a different process because of some of the, you know, the things that we're facing. So, again, just, you know, not, not again, not putting you in a spot, but maybe for next time, just some ideas. I think it's a good idea because we're going to need their suggestions to save money. Thank you. Uh, and that is a topic at tomorrow's staff meeting. So we'll be talking about it, uh, talking about it then. And, and sorry, and uh, for Mr. Cog, tell us questions. Cause we, I know if you could maybe if answer or respond to some of his direct questions. If not tonight, maybe, you know, I, I know Steve's usually good about sending emails, so maybe we can respond to some of his questions. Um, and I have provided Mr. Cogtella a response to the question about the issue of taxes, um, and that was an item that the town attorney nor I were asked to address as part of the conditions of sale and council was notified that um, in accepting the agreement they would be effectively waiving the taxes for 33 North River Street. Okay. Anyone else with any questions? Thank you. Okay, we move on to the next uh, town attorney report and communications. No formal report this evening, Mr. <laughs> Mayor. You're welcome. Your work is done. Uh, uh, item number 11, report of any, any special committees of the council. Does anyone have a report of any of the committees? Hearing none, 12 old business. I think we are moving to item, which is appointments by the town council. Item 11, do we have a motion to remove from the table? So moved. So moved.
So moved by Councillor Fox, second by Deputy Mayor Suzak. All those in favor? Any discussion? All those in favor? We have 10 for and zero against. Do we have a nomination on the floor? Yes. Um, I believe it's Kathy Flanagan for the Enfield Beautification Committee. Second. We have a motion for Kathy Flanagan by Councillor Sakala, second by Deputy Mayor Suzak. Any discuss uh, all those in favor? Nope. Any got to close nominations first. So yeah. I'm sorry, the motion to close nominations? Yeah. By Deputy Mayor Suzak, seconded by Councillor Falk. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? By show of hands, we have 10 0. Now we do roll call, please. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Uh, Kathleen Flanagan. Councillor Grisotti. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Kathy Flanagan. Councillor Fall. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Kathleen Flanagan. Cou Councillor Ungeyer. Four. There's 10 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. <clears throat> Moving on to item or uh, number 19, Ethics Commission. Do we have a motion to remove that from table? So moved. So moved by Councillor Falk. Second. Second by Councillor Denny. Any discussion? Hearing none, by a show of hands. All those in favor? We have 10 and 0. Uh, motion is removed. Do I have any nominations? Le Leanne Boyer. The uh, Leanne Boyer has been uh, made by motion by Councillor Denny. Do I have a second? Second, second. by Deputy Mayor Suzak. I have a motion to close nominations. So moved, so moved by Councillor Falk. Second. Second by Councillor Crisati. Any discussion? By show of hands. All those in favor of closing nominations, we have 10 4 0 against. Roll call, please. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Leanne Boyer. Councillor Crisati. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Leanne Boyer. Councillor Fall. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Leanne Boyer. <clears throat> Councillor Ungeyer. Four. There's 10 in favor, not against, and no abstentions. Item 21, do we have a motion to, rem uh, to remove? So moved. So, so moved by uh, Councillor Falk. Seconded by Councillor Denny. Uh, do we have a nomination on the floor? Yes. Um, I'd like to nominate Leroy Nash. Motion has been made by Councillor Sakala for Leroy Nash. Do I have a second? Councillor uh, Crisati, second. Do we have a motion to close nominations? So moved. So moved by Councillor Falk. Second. Seconded by Councillor Muller. Any discussion? All those for closing nominations, please raise your hand. 10 4, 0 against. Roll call, please. Councillor Bosco. 4. Councillor Sakala. Leroy Nash. Councillor Crisati. 4. Councillor Davis. 4. Councillor Denny. Leroy Nash. Councillor Falk. 4. Mayor Ludwig. 4. Councillor Muller. 4. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Leroy Nash. Councillor Ungeyer. 4. <coughs> There's 10 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. <clears throat> Item 22, another uh, ethics commission. Again, do I have a motion to remove from the table? So moved. So moved by Councillor Falk, seconded by Councillor Crisati. Do I have a, uh, do I need, I'm sorry, do we need a show of hands to remove? Suzanne, just to be clear. Yes. Yes, yeah, so I have by show of hands, we have to remove that item from the table. We have 10 4 0 against. Do I have a nomination? Deputy Mayor Suzak? I'd like to nominate Aaron Cook. Second. We have a nomination of Aaron Cook by Deputy Mayor Suzak, seconded by Councillor Falk. Do we have a motion to, to uh, close nominations? So moved. By Councillor Falk, seconded by Councillor Muller. <laughs> any, by show, any discussion on the motion? By show of hands to close nomination, all those in favor? <coughs> those against, we have 10, 4, and 0 against. Then roll call, please. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Aaron Cook. Councillor Crisati. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Aaron Cook. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Aaron Cook. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. There's 10 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. <clears throat> uh, item 25, uh, okay. is there a motion to remove from the table? <laughs> motion by Councillor Sakala, seconded by Councillor Crisati. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Those against? We have 10 in favor and zero against for making a, a nomination. Uh, do we have a nomination, please? I have a nomination for Douglas Max Allen. 
Second. Uh, nomination by Councillor Denny. Second. Seconded by Councillor Crisati. Do we have a motion to close nominations? Motion. By Councillor Sakala. Seconded Second. by Councillor Denny. Any discussion on the motion? Yes. Councillor Sakala. Thank you. Um, Doug has applied and put in his application for the Joint Facilities Committee. If you read through his application, he is more than qualified. I think this is one of those committees that you need somebody who is versed in construction and construction management, and that is exactly what his background is in. If you read through it, he <coughs> indicates that his background is in construction management, management and facilities management, and um, he has been on the High School Building Committee. Fire Commissioner, Deputy Chief, um, Council in the Wetlands. I think he is someone who has, um, over the years, dedicated a lot of his time to um, volunteer for this town. And um, I think it's wonderful that he wants to do it again. And I think this is um, a committee that he will do very well with, because I think we need people on that committee that really know what they're talking about. Deputy Mayor Suzak. I guess it's a committee that um, on December 4th will give us a presentation and give a summary of the work that's been done on the committee. I read back through the charge, and once that's accomplished, the committee will no longer exist. So at this point, I would not be in favor of putting anybody on for one meeting that will occur on the 30th. Um, I think that once once the council hears the work that's been done by that committee, we're going to request that the charge be expanded. And I think at that time, I would like to look at all the qualifications of all the people who are interested in either staying on or coming on. So at this point, I'd like to refrain from moving forward. Any further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Bosco. Against. Councillor Sakala. For. Councillor Crisotti. For. Councillor Davis. For. Councillor Denny. Doug McSellen. Councillor Falk. Against. Count our Mayor Ludwig. Against. Councillor Muller. Against. Councillor Suzak. Abstain. And Councillor Ungoyer. Against. We have one, two, three, four in favor. One, two, three, four, five against, and one abstention. <clears throat> Any other uh, nominations for items 26 through 33? I don't think we have any. Um, item B, appointments by the town manager? No appointments at this time, sir. Okay. We move to new business, item 13. Uh, Consent agenda, consent agenda, item A. You want a motion to approve it? Is that what you mean? Yeah, we want a mo I'm sorry, a motion to approve the consent, consent agenda. Motion. So moved by Councilor Second. Sakala, seconded by Councilor Falk. Any discussion on the consent agenda? Hearing none, roll call. Oh, we can do it by hand, okay. All those in favor, try to show of hands. 10 again, zero. Motion passes. Uh, item B, new business, town council appointed. I don't think we have any. C, town manager appointments. None at this time, sir. Item D, P and Z appointed, council approved. I'm not sure what that is, but I don't think we have anything there. Item 14, items for discussion. So we went through, right, we passed through, all through A through I. Right. E, G, and F. So we are down to item C. Again, appointments. <coughs> item, I'm sorry, item B, appointment, town council approve. Housing authority, items, item three. We have a motion to remove from the table. We don't so, have to remove it. It's already from no, the table, right? Do so we have a nomination, please? Yeah, William Ballard. Yeah. William Ballard. You have a question, Suzanne? I do. Yeah. Um, your appointment to the Housing Authority, have you also had the Cultural and Arts? Appointments, or did I misunderstand? <coughs> no, he's 
skip those. We skip. Oh, we saw. Oh, so okay. item one. Sorry, we have cultural arts. I didn't. I didn't see the. Uh, mm -hmm. Did we get the? Uh, no, I think they're all just resigned. Uh, all, yeah, I don't think we have an application for those, Suzanne. They're yeah, they're all just resignations. The resignation, Suzanne. Sorry. Yeah. So item B three, Housing Authority. And that's got a. The appointments. Housing. I don't believe so now. All right. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So I think all, I think we're going to miscellaneous. First. Right. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So I have to move these items to miscellaneous. No. You already did. Right. But, yeah. But are we in miscellaneous now, or are, is there anything more that you have to? We have another nomination. We have another nomination. B three. My, my, sorry, my I don't. B3, right, then we go to miscellaneous. Yeah, okay. Well, we already voted. Like, so, do we have a motion to remove? Okay. Or, excuse me, do we, have a mo do we have a nomination for B3? Yes. Yes. I have a nomination for William Ballard. Nomination by uh, De uh, Councillor Denny, seconded by Councillor Deputy Mayor Sakala. For exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got promoted. All right. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> uh, Seconded by Deputy Mayor Suzak, of the name of Bill Ballard. Do we have motion any other nomi nominations? We'll motion to close nomination by Councillor Falk. <laughs> Seconded by Councillor Muller. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. So show of hands on closing uh, nominations. Show of hands on closing nominations. All those in favor? We have 10, 4, 0 against. Roll call, please. Councilor, I'll get it down. I nominated. <laughs> yeah. Councillor Bosco. 4. Councillor Sakala. Against. Councillor Crisotti. Four. Councillor Davis. Against. Councillor Denny. William Ballard. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Bill Ballard. And Councillor Ungar. Four. We have eight in favor, two against, and no abstentions. EFG, right? So now we're on miscellaneous. So now we're on a, we're GH. We actually was part of our, we moved to miscellaneous. So we are at item I, correct? We have to go to I because that wasn't part of miscellaneous. You're sorry, C. So appointments right. to town manager. Sorry. No, at this point, sir, you should be moving on the resolution, which is the uh, Lego grant, I believe. For item E, correct? Correct. Yeah. So, uh, motion for item E. Find the resolution. So item E. Right. Yeah. So I items actually see any yep. transfer of funds for Family Resource Center of 104,293. That's correct, sir. Yes. Yep. Okay, let me find a resolution. Bum, 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 bum. Get there. It should be page ninety five. Here we go. Okay. Brian, any uh, so, so resolution? Yeah. Be, yeah. Yeah. be resolved that in accordance with chapter chapter eleven, section eight F of the town charter, the following transfer is hereby made. Two, Family Resource Center, salaries part time, 22046098 dash 512000, $30,000, 861, Social Security, 
2204609-522-000-1913. Medicare uh, fund 2220460098-522100 of $443. Workman's comp section 2204609-8-526-000 $876. Other professional services, 2204-6098-533900 of $70,200 from Family Resource Center, Lego Grant, 2204470-460098 of $104,293 certified. Uh, the, the funds are available as of November 20, 2017 by John Wilcox, Director of Finance. So moved. Moved by Councillor Falk, seconded by Deputy Mayor Suzak. Any discussion or questions on this grant? This is just a simple grant for uh, that we're you know that we're accepting. Any anyone have any questions on it, it Councilor Falk? It is a repetitive one. We we've, we've been doing this for years, I assume. Yes, sir. This is uh, Lego has been generous and been a continuing provider of this money in uh -huh. uh, in the past. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisotti. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suze. Four. Councillor Ungar. Here. I mean, four. Yes, ten in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Item D, resolution adopting title. Title, that's 11, correct? Title six. Title six of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 for the Town of Enfield. Be it resolved a resolution adopting Title VI plan in accordance with the Civil Rights Act of 1964 for the Town of Enfield, where is the federal government enact, enacted Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 as amended to prevent discrimination on the grounds of race, color, sex, age, disability, or national origin, and to ensure that individuals are not excluded from participation in denied benefits of or otherwise subject to discrimination under any program or activity receiving federal financial assistance on the basis of race, color, sex, disability, or national origin. Whereas throughout the years, additional regulations, statutes, directives, cases, and executive orders have been passed which expand the breadth of Title VI and whereas it is a requirement of the Connecticut Department of Transportation and U.S. Department of Transportation that communities receive federal financial assistance adopt a Title VI plan. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Enfield Town Council hereby adopts attached <coughs> Title VI plan. So moved. Mo mo uh, motion by Councillor Falk, seconded by Councillor Crisotti. Any discussion? I, I have a question. Councillor Falk. This sounds like something we do as an ongoing basis. Why, why do we have a resolution here to do this? Yes, sir. It's a document that this body adopts, I won't say regularly, but it does on occasion. Um, and typically it's a reaffirmation as a result of some kind of new award. It is checking off a particular requirement mm -hmm. of the grant for which we are, are uh, in So receipt. it's tied in with the grant then? That is correct. Yes, yeah. sir. And do we do this every year or just when the grant comes up? Uh, it's when the particular grant that has been provided to the town requires the reaffirmation. So mm -hmm. not every grant requires it, but some do, which is why we see it on occasion, but not frequently. Okay, thank you. Sure. So, so Brian, a little bit of my confusion. Why isn't this Title IX? Um, that I don't have the answer to. I don't know Peter Bryanton is here, um, and he is the uh, author or co-author, I should say, of this particular That's legislation. That's why I was confused. He um, might be able to better explain that. Good evening, Councilors. Peter Bryanton, Director of Community Development. Um, Title VI uh, has is specifically about, um, uh, you know, Sorry, uh, it specifically states that there will be no dim, uh, discrimination based on the items that were talked about in the in the um, the resolution. Title IX has to do with um, academics okay. and specifically okay. sports and academics. Okay. Okay. Um, so this is a different segment of the Civil Rights Act. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else? Anyone have any questions? 
Thank you for clarifying that. That's you. why I got confused. I was thinking of Title IX. Sure. Yep. Any other questions? Hearing none, we'll call, please. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisotti. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungard. Four. There's <coughs> ten in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Okay, hey, item E. A resolution authorizing the town manager to execute a license agreement for the town vehicle access to 40 O'Hare Avenue. Whereas town refuge recycling yard waste collection vehicles are unable to turn around on certain dead end roads where road coverage is too limited for vehicle turns. And whereas Roger Rome, the owner of 40 O'Hare Avenue, has agreed to allow the town to use his driveway for its vehicles to turn around and be it resolved that it is in the best interest of the town of Enfield to enter, to enter into a license agreement with Roger Rome to allow Tom to, around, to allow town vehicles access to 40 O'Hare Avenue and to hold the town harmless and be it resolved, further resolved, that the town manager is duly authorized to enter it and to sign the attached license agreement on behalf of the town of Enfield. So moved. So moved by Councillor Falk. Second. Seconded by Councillor Denny. Any discussion? Deputy Mayor Suzak. Brian, approximately how many of these occasions that will we need to use this to expedite turning around our vehicles? Uh, my understanding is there's about two dozen um, situations like this. This happens to be the first um, documented instance where we'll be entering into a license agreement, but um, depending upon how this particular arrangement works out, it's my understanding that Public Works will be reaching out to those other individuals as uh, need dictates so that we can enter into those as well. Okay, thank you. It looks like a good solution to a problem. Any other? <coughs> Council Scala. Do each of these license agreements um, include a term that we will pre-inspect the property? Um, in this particular instance, it did not, but I did communicate leadership's concern to that effect uh, to the Public Works Director the following day. So this is a condition that they have gone out and documented the existing condition at this particular facility. I'm sure that based on the feedback we received um, from leadership that those um, considerations will be included in future agreements. Sure. Any other questions? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisotti. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ongaya. Four. There's ten in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Item F, resolution authorizing <laughs> the town manager to sell the police department canine known as Bruin. Be it resolved that the Enfield Town Council, upon the retirement of the police department canine known as Bruin, does hereby authorize the town manager to be the signatory on a bill on the bill of sale, transferring ownership of Bruin to his handler, Officer Christopher Dufresne. <coughs> so moved. So moved by Councillor Falk. Seconded by Councillor Crisotti. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisotti. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. There's ten in favor, none against, and no abstentions. <coughs> so we have to make a motion to remove the uh, building committee, correct? Um, no, no, the. It's already been removed. That is correct. Okay. The motion did not include moving that legislation. Okay. So that moves us to item 16, public communications. Anyone in the audience would like to speak to the town council tonight? Walter. Walter Cruzel, 21 Charlie Road. Charlotte Riley, 55 John Dot Drive. Walter Cruzel, Vice President, Peerless Tool and Machine. But all those are trumped by Walter Cruzel, Chairman of the Board, Charlotte Riley, Vice Chairman of the Board of Education. We want to congratulate you all on your new term. We are both here tonight to extend our hand out. And anything we can do for you, our board is willing to work with you guys 
And control room, please. That is our new public school logo designed by our um, superintendent, in-house, no external costs involved. So that will be displayed. That is an exclusive view. Nice. So you guys got the first view of it <laughs> on TV. Only here first. Yeah, Only here first. <clears throat> So we're going to present it at our, at our board meeting, but I got permission to bring it to you guys first. And kudos to whoever removed the signs at 124 North Maple. Thank you very much. Through the mayor to the town manager, could we remove, remove the signs at Henry Barnard that say the uh, administrative wing, please? And that's all I had to say. Would you say, like to say anything, Vice Chairman? No, we're good. Anything we could do? Our phones are always on. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone, would anyone else like to speak for the council at this time? Bob. Bob T. Katz, Hazardville. Uh, just to let everybody know, North Maple is not North Maple. It's Maple Street. If you go down to the assessor's office, that anybody lives on North Maple up to the 300 live on Maple Street. The signs are incorrect. And they've been incorrect since 1960. Fermi High is on Maple Street, not North Maple. The Muslim Cemetery is on Maple Street. But once you get to Brainerd Road at 300, that's North Maple to Long Meadow. Uh, I wouldn't feel too bad that the state closed the prison in Enfield because they have closed eight prisons to save $50 million. And and they're on the verge of decriminalizing marijuana, which will, and Massachusetts is purging everybody's records, releasing people from prison. So you're probably going to have more prisons because there's many, many people in there for possession or use of marijuana, which shouldn't be classified as a class one drug. Uh, I'm going to tell you a story about Old Lyme. Old Lyme had a dilemma. Uh, there's 130 towns in Connecticut losing school enrollment, school population. Uh, Old Lyme has got the situation. They got three elementary schools, which, which are far larger in square footage than JFK. And they, how they approached it, they approached it different. They formed a steering committee to determine what they're gonna do. The dilemma of their biggest 100,000 square foot building, they couldn't, do it, they couldn't sell it, they have to use it. It's in the deed. It was a donation uh, from some benefactor. Uh, what they have done, they're making part, it part of an elementary school and they're leasing the rest of it. This is an innovative process, which we maybe we should lease, start putting businesses and offices in Fermi if we want to get in, into a, a private business. Um, 44 towns are losing population. Enfield is in, in the bottom 10%. From 2010 to 2015, we lost 10.4 percent. That's not including the prison population. That's declining. Amazingly, Enfield has 54 percent males and 46 percent females. It should be the other, almost the other way around throughout the world. But the dominance of males because of the prison. And if you do try to do a fertility study in Niantic for the women's prison, there's many, many more women in Niantic, so they have, a, they have to really factor out all the prison, fa prison population to do all these studies. But Enfield's got 3,000 in the prisons, and if they close another prison, we're going to have less. The predicted population by 2015 is 38,000. Those are the real numbers. UConn did the study and we should prepare for it for start downsizing to save money. Windsor Locks is on a four-day week in their town hall and they're, they're doing, they're servicing their population. There's many things that we could do. What really buzzed me off was the town manager cutting the library hours and cutting everything back in the library. Those are the services the people use. Go to four-day work week in the town hall. Other towns do it, and that's many, many savings that you can. And 
and start looking at these uh, departments. Do we need all these people, all these departments? I don't think so. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. <coughs> Jack. Jack Sheridan, 7 Buchanan Road. I wasn't going to speak again, but Mr. Tcats brought up, jogged my memory. Um, the prison closing. Um, maybe we should take another look at that for the solar plant. Now that the prison's closing, we have that property's already there. It's already, you know, not being utilized. So maybe that would be a prime spot for it. And congratulations, you did a great job tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Anyone else like to speak for the council? Second time? Okay. Public communications are closed. Thank you, everyone. Um, item 17, any councilor communications? Councilor Denny. Yes, uh, I'm just, uh, I just want to make a comment. Uh, I'm so glad that a new uh, council uh, to work together for a better Enfield. Thank you, Councilor Denny. Anyone else? Most majority. Uh, once, uh, Councilor, I mean, uh, <laughs> Brian, D, uh, the the w, the uh, water pollution control meeting, maybe for the new folks, you know, bringing up the prison closing January-ish, we should have a meeting. Does that work? Yes, we will confer tomorrow at staff meeting and make sure that council so for is. Some of the newer folks just to kind of maybe film in where we are and the, you know, the fees of collecting, you know, and then pen potential impact maybe of the prison closing. Sure. Yep. We, we also talking about bus tour. Sorry, another good. Yeah. Sorry, Latin, uh, some of the newer folks, even some folks who may have been here, possibility of a bus tour. Yeah, as we thinking of having a new charge for the facility committee, and again, the folks to see the actual real estate we do own. I don't know if that's possible, but throwing it out there for folks who might want to, you know, do a, a joint, you know, kind of tour. Back again, I hate to back in the 90s, we had done that as a council. Yeah. Sure, I um, was. Um, thinking that that might be a uh, one-off from a goals and objectives discussion. We're um, right. assembling the past groupings, if you will, for uh, for review. So um, as soon as we finish that and we can get some direction from leadership, we right. can um, talk about it then and if I that's okay. I think we're okay. shooting for January goals and objectives. Does that work for everybody? So that's that's our goal? Okay. Sure. Yep. Councilor Rungayer. I just wanted to thank Chairman Cruzel and Vice Chair R Riley for coming in, and I look forward to working with you. Any other council any other council communications? Hearing none. Motion driven by Councillor Falk. Seconded by Councillor Muller. All those in favor? Show of hands, 10-0. Motion's adjourned. <laughs>